look like you're from the future Or straight out of Home Depot You people say they love you But most just say hell no You're full of problems But always afraid to shoot If you wouldn't be so funny I would give you the boot There are some firearms people just love to hate And this is one of them The Chris Vector For every person that you will find that says that the Chris Vector is a nice gun, you will find five persons that say it's a terrible, terrible firearm. Well, I bought it anyway. This one is the current Gen 2.1 version of the Chris Vector. And as you can see, it's the green color version that has been discontinued after I bought it. Guess I was the only one who liked that kind of halo vibe going on with the green color. My setup is based on the Chris Vector pistol. I installed the Chris Vector foldable and retractable Chris Vector 2.1 stock on this firearm to make this essentially what you Americans would call an SBR. I also installed a sound suppressor by the Norwegian company ATAC via direct attachment. And this one is an SMG suppressor for 40 cal, so that's also usable for 10 mm. If you're wondering, is 10 mm actually a good choice to be suppressed? Well, yes it is, because there are several 10 mm factory loads that are already subsonic. So this one is like the better 45. The Chris Vector has attachment points for Picatinny rails on both of its side. I just opted to install a single Picatinny rail and not the one on the left side, because else it could interfere with your hand when you try to operate the bolt lever. There is also a Picatinny rail on the bottom and this one comes pre-installed. Because I'm just using the Picatinny rail on the right side, I've opted for a light and laser model, so I can have light and laser at the same time, and I positioned it so that I can operate it well with the reach of my thumb. Works. There is a Picatinny rail on the top of the firearm that goes the full length of the firearm, so you pretty much can mount everything you want up there, including some very big scopes if you desire. Also, the firearm comes with flip up sights by Chris. They are plastic flip up sights, but they will do the job. Of course, it's recommended to use some sort of red dot scope. I personally opted for the Sig Romeo 8T because I like the form factor, but. <laughs> This fucking front cap of the Romeo T keeps coming off, so it's no sense to trying to push it back in because within the next few shots it will just come off. Well, sick, that sucks. Please make a better one. Thank you. When you're choosing a red dot scope for your Chris, be sure that you don't get too low because else you wouldn't be able to aim for it correctly. So whatever red dot sight you pick should at least have co-witness height and that one will work. The Chris Vector has just a 5.5 inch barrel. This is rather short if you look at it for this huge size of firearm. Without the folding stock, the firearm is 425 millimeters long or just over 16 inch. So that's a lot of firearm for such a small barrel. There are also versions of the Chris Vector with a 6.5 inch barrel that has some sort of handguard and there is a carbon version with a 16 inch barrel that has some funky sci-fi looking fake suppressor cover over it. Well, I guess some people like that. I prefer to have a real suppressor on my firearms. Even without a suppressor, this is a very front heavy firearm. So when you reload, it's kind of hard to get it up to where it should be. You see, I'm already starting slightly chinking and I'm just doing a video now and not even trying to be there on target. Now let's talk ergonomics. The Magwell is designed that you can use it as an impromptu vertical grip, which is a pretty nice idea. But the mag release is right where your hand is going to be. <laughs> well, I first thought, yeah, people telling me that they lost the mag when holding it at the mag release. Come on, that's bullshit. Well, at least so I thought, because <laughs> after a few shots at the range, when I freshly got the firearm, it happened to me too. If you're trying to grip it very firmly, it's possible that you push the mag release without actually wanting it to do. So 
that's not really a good way to hold this firearm. Well, easy solution for that problem, right? Just don't hold it there, just hold it on the handguard. Well, that seems like an easy solution, but the palm of your hand actually touches the mag release again. So if you're trying to grip it firmly, this is what can happen. Left-hand shooters don't have this problem if they're using the handguard to hold this firearm. The fingers are not near the mag release, but if they're holding the mag release again, the fingers will be very close to the mag release. So if they're trying to get rid of it, there, there's a chance that the magazine will drop. My solution for this issue is a stubby vertical grip. This makes the Chris so much more easy to hold and you are nowhere near the mag release. Of course, if you can't legally install a vertical grip because it would SPR the firearm or any other firearm or whatever the rules in your country are that prevents you from using a vertical grip, there is an angel for grip from Chris that mounts somewhere here and kind of extends this one forward and acts like a hand stop that prevents you from going too much to the back and therefore prevents to accidentally press the mag release. Oh, and speaking about hand stops, I highly, highly recommend using the Chris Vector always with a hand stop because without the hand stop, it would be so easy that your fingers slip forward to a place where they shouldn't be in front of the barrel. Even when I'm trying it like this way, this is probably a chance of getting burned, but without the hand stop, there is way, way, way too much risk to get up front and burn your fingers. So always use a hand stop when using a Chris Vector. Now let's talk controls of the Chris Vector. There isn't everything bad with the Mac release. If you're looking closely, you can see grooves in here and here. That means you can take your finger, put your finger inside the groove, push the Mac release and pull the magazine out in case it should get stuck. So that's actually a pretty nice idea to get stuck max out more easily. If you're looking at the bolt lever, that one is a foldable design. It's also kind of curved at the front so that you can more easily get your hand in to fold it open. So you don't need to fold it open and then pull it back. You can just pull it back with a single motion. Also, this is the bolt release. See how stuck out it is at the moment? That's big enough that you can give it a good old slap if you need to release it more quickly. Also, the bolt release has a neat little design. You can use just the left hand to pull it back and lock it in. You don't need to, you know, like pull it back and try to cramp in or whatever. Just pull it back and with your thumb, push it in and the manual bolt release is engaged. The safety is the only control part on the Chris Vector that is on both sides. You can easily excise it with your trigger finger and with your thumb. As a bonus, there is a compartment in the grip area that you can use to store, I don't know, a cleaning set, snacks or whatever else fancies you. You're probably wondering why the hell did I pick the Chris Vector in 10mm instead of 9mm or 45 Well, my idea was to get a 10mm firearm for home defense in the compact carbon form factor. And there is not really that many options in Austria for that one. So I opted for the Chris Vector. And oh, also, just look at 10mm versus 45 the 10 millimeter is such a mean bullet. All center fire variants of the Chris Vector use Glock magazines. This one being the 10 millimeter version, it uses the Glock 20 magazines because the Glock 20, well, is chambered in 10 millimeter. Makes sense, right? The Glock 20 magazine has 15 rounds and sits fully flush inside the weapon. Also, Chris does a magazine extension for the Glock 20 magazines that bring the capacity up to a whopping 33 rounds. Well, 33 rounds of 10 millimeter, that's some serious firepower right there. If you ever fired a pistol in 10 millimeter, you know there's a lot of power in this round. And 
A lot of power comes with a lot of recoil, that's why the Glock 20 is not fun to shoot. But the Chris Vector uses a unique recoil management system. Instead of the bolt just going straight to the back, it goes back and down. So, the barrel through to the recoil wants to move up, but the bolt goes down. So, it moves up, but the bolt goes down, meaning that the movement of the barrel to the up is countered by the downwards movement. What does that mean? That means that the Chris Vector in 10mm is super fun to shoot. It's extremely controllable. It's very easy to put uh, fast shot placements right next to each other because the barrel movement to the up is very, very limited. Of course, there is still a bit of recoil, but for my feeling, it's not moving up like it should. It's more like trying to get a bit to the right, which is probably because I'm right-handed, but it's so, so fun to fire this 10 mm firearm. What's not fun is the trigger. Chris calls this a pivoting single-stage trigger, but actually it feels more like a grippy two-stage trigger. Because there is the first phase where you can move the trigger without any resistance whatsoever. After that, the resistance starts and the trigger slowly creeps, 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 creeps. I'm still creeping, creep, 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 creeps until it finally releases. Let me show you that again. There you go. No resistance and until then it starts to creep. Of course, if you're doing fast shots, that's not a big problem. But if you're trying to do precise slow shots, this feels kind of crappy. Well, I would prefer if at least this space wouldn't be there and if it just would start here with the trigger or if the second phase of the trigger would be less creepy and more crisp. Well, crisp and crisp, you would think that would actually fit together, but no crisp trigger here. Even though the trigger of the vector isn't made for precise shooting, it's very easy to make groups at 25 meters where the bullet holes touch each other. So it's pretty much what you get from a 5.5 inch barrel with a stock. Doesn't surprise me, other people can shoot super close groups with a pistol at 25 meter too without a stock. Unfortunately, I couldn't test this one at longer ranges because in Austria, the shooting ranges that go from 100 meter to 300 meter really don't like if people turn up with short barrel pistol calibered carbines. Anyway, from my experience with shooting ranges that actually allow using short barrel firearms at longer ranges, this one should be very easily hold center mass at 100 meter because the 10 millimeter is a good one and 5.5 inch is good enough for that one. Now let's get an inside look of the Chris Vector. With the Chris Vector, the roles of the upper and lower receiver are reversed. The low receiver holds everything from the barrel to the bolt that is relevant to actually fire, while the upper receiver holds the trigger. So, you can disassemble the firearm without tools by removing pin number one, pin number two, and there's pin number three. That will separate the lower from the upper receiver like this. The upper receiver of the Chris Vector is almost like a reverse bullpup. Why, you may ask? Well, a bullpup has the trigger at the front and has the hammer on the back and needs to connect those somehow. With the Chris Vector, the hammer is on the front and the trigger is on the back that is connected. There is one final pin left and this pin gives you access to the bolt carrier and the bolt. Just remove it with our tools and there it goes. There comes the bolt carrier and here comes the bolt that's attached to it. As you can see, the bolt is attached this way so that it can actually move around the corner. And if you want to put it back in, you have to make sure that the bolt goes to the right rail and the bolt carrier goes to a different rail here. That's it. Now, let's have a look inside. And you can see how the bolt actually moves around the corner 
and back up again. Here is it again. There is the bolt. It moves back and it follows the bolt carrier into the downward movement until, of course, the spring is fully compressed and pushes it back up. More movement in the gun means more dirt that can slow the movement down. And that's especially when you're using a suppressor. So, if you're using a suppressor with the Chris Vector, you should really clean the firearm after every shooting session. And be sure that it's good oiled or greased. I'm personally using grease in the rails of the section and oil on the bolt to keep it nice and wet. But of course, this means you have to clean out the greased, the dirty grease after each shooting session, big hose else the dirty grease will slow down the bolt instead of making it move more faster. Well, same one goes for oil. Don't you be a lazy oiler and just oil the dirty gum. Clean the gum first, oil it later. That will help you run the Chris Vector without major problems. Now that I mentioned problems, the Vector has a very bad reputation for having lots of problems. I'm afraid I have to say that this is true. I've spoke to many Vector owners and the people with the 9mm version seems to have the most problems with failure to feed, failure to eject. The 45 version has the least problems, it seems. Many people with the 45 version pretty uh, say it's a good firearm and they work very well for them. And the 10mm version is somewhat in between. Some people have problems, some people don't have problems. Wow. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people who ain't having problems. The problem that I have with the Chris Vector is if I manually operate the bolt to load the first bullet of the magazine, I have to really push it all the way back, back, back and release it very fast. If I just, you know, like not going fully or release it too slow, the 10 millimeter round will get caught on the ramp right about here so i always have to make sure that i have to fully engage with you know macho style engage my chris vector wow unfortunately that's a bus killer for me because if i cannot load the firearm in a stress situation so that's 100 percent reliable then it's not a home defense gun for me I won't use a gun in a stress situation or in a competition if I can't say that it's 100% reliable. Well, I tried different oils and different greases. I tried to polish the ramp, but the problem keeps persisting. And I personally think that this is a problem of how Chris designed the vector. The feeding ramp is just too steep for the longer 10 millimeter round because the 10 millimeter round is longer than the 45 round and the Chris Vector was designed for the 45 to begin with. So I do wish Chris would look again at the 10 millimeter version and maybe try to change the feed ramp a bit in the future so this problem won't happen again. Just to make this perfectly clear, this problem only occurs if I load a fresh magazine and pull the bolt to load the first bullet manually. When firing, there is no problem with feeding or rejecting. This is really just with loading the first bullet, which is kind of interesting, but hey, that's how it is. Also, when using the bolt release, it also works. There is really just a problem with manually loading the first bullet when it's not fully from back and released very, very fast. But again, that's not stress proofed and therefore not reliable. Let's sum things up. The Chris Vector exceeded my expectations and disappointed me at the same time. Exceeded because it really tames the 10mm so well, it runs super great with the ATEC suppressor and is a good suppressor platform, and 33 rounds of 10mm is some serious firepower. But, and there's always a but. The problem with working the bolt to load the first bullet being not 100% reliable is a big issue for me. So this one makes it not a home defense gun for me and therefore I feel like I wasted my money because I wanted a good gun for home defense. This one is not 100% reliable, so 
waste of money. On the other hand, what I did get is a great plinging gun that is lots of fun for tactical drills and for just having fun at the range. Although it's not usable for home defense for me and I won't use it in shooting competitions because it's prone to failure because, as I said, the ball is here. Now there's just one question left to ask. The question of all questions, the most important thing there is ever to be asked. Will the Chris Vector G36 carry handle? It absolutely will. Just look how perfect it fits up there, like it was always supposed to be like this. This gives the Chris Vector some points in the lovability department and God knows <laughs> the Chris Vector deserves some love. It's not a perfect firearm, but it kind of has a place in my heart. It's definitely one of the firearms I really enjoy bringing to the range. It's just not the firearm that I enjoy bringing to work or home defense. <laughs> that concludes my review of the Chris Vector. And if you guys and gals feel like supporting me, you can go to scarred.redbubble.com and get your G36 carry handle on t-shirts, mugs, bathroom maps and whatsoever. Until we meet again, auf Wiedersehen!